and the rest of that match you can see tomorrow during the course of Sunday Grandstand, plus, of course, Australia against the West Indies, and that is win or bust for both those teams, as it was today for Zimbabwe against South Africa. Harare or bust, I suppose you could say, for them. Now let's look at the South African side. Unbeaten, unchanged, uh, they resisted the temptation to give everyone a game, despite being assured of qualification and having enjoyed that resounding triumph over Kenya in midweek. But two changes for Zimbabwe. Off-spinner Andy Whittle and leg-spinner Adam Huckle brought in for Paul Strang and paceman Mpumalemo Mbangwa. Well, the Zimbabwe captain Alistair Campbell won the toss and he decided to bat. So with run rates in mind, not only did Zimbabwe's batsmen have to contend with Donald, Pollock and the rest, they also had to score quickly over those crucial first 15 overs. And Neil Johnson, once a Natal teammate of Pollock and Rhodes, ensured they did just that. Terrific shot, four more. This is a wonderful start for Zimbabwe. Chuck Cullis to Grant Flower. He's getting that ball to swing, but it's swinging off the bat as well. That's another boundary. He has launched that, Neil Johnson. What a smashing shot that was. Yes. Slapped away by Johnson. And that's racing away over the turf for another four. Johnson's score is leaping up in boundaries. And that's the 50th for Zimbabwe in just the 12th over. Hellworthy to flower. Gone. Darrell Cullinan takes a very good catch at slip. That ball was travelling and Elworthy has done it for South Africa. Elworthy's got this just in the right place. You can't really drive that one. It's just too short. Front bar out for 19. Elworthy to Johnson. What a way to get to 50. Terrific shot, he's had his luck, he's ridden it, and uh, takes him to 51. Of only 57 balls and 10 fours. Donald, on his fourth over, he's bowling to good Goodwin. What a wonderful shot. Just shows the lack of pace in this pitch. No worthy to Goodwin. Terrific shot. That one, a glorious shot, brings up the 100. Kuzner to Goodwin on 34. Short, and he hasn't got away with it. Gary Kirsten will take a simple catch. Kuzner has made the breakthrough that South Africa desperately needed. Murray Goodwin just chipping it up in the air. Wasn't quite in a position to play it. Kirsten taking a simple catch. Donald to Flower. Good hits. Short straight boundary and uh, maximum six. How many times is Donald driven back over his head for six? Plenty of wickets in hand, eight of them. This can be a 12 over onslaught. Donald to try and stop it. Johnson, this could be out. And is. Sean Pollock, the catcher. That's the end of Johnson. With a very nice 76. And really, he's put Zimbabwe in a good position to go on to a big total. So, with the breakthrough made and wicket 199 in the bag, it didn't take Donald long to claim his 200th one-day international victim, Campbell, LBW, to the first ball that he faced. And crucially, as ever, the bowling was backed by outstanding work in the field. Pollock's throw leading to the important wicket of Andy Flower. But the lower orders made sure the good start wasn't wasted. The lovely shot. Guy Whittle put everything into that. That was beautifully hit. And Guy Whittle has caused some damage. The groundsman will send him a bill. It's Alan Donald back into the attack. Stuart Carlisle cuts away. That'll go. That's flying away. Much needed runs for Zimbabwe. 
Well, 20 more runs added for the loss of just one wicket. Zimbabwe finishing on 233. The captain apart, good scoring all the way down the order. A more than useful opening stand of 65. And Neil Johnson top scoring with 76 off 117 balls. Three wickets for Donald, as threatening as ever. But Jack Callis was unusually expensive. And so the South Africans used six bowlers in all. Uh, but you have to say that given the nature of South Africa's form, you'd have thought even that target would be fairly straightforward. But don't forget, the incentive was all Zimbabwe's. So here we go. The first ball of the reply, less than five and over needed. Johnson to Kirsten, and it's Alan Wilkins, Roland Butcher, Barry Richards, and first of all, Jack Bannister to describe it. Out! Great catch. First ball of the innings. The ball bounced. Neil Johnson struck. Andy Whittle, the catcher. And Kirsten's gone. What a start for Zimbabwe. South Africa, one ball gone, no runs for one wicket. Very, very tough delivery first up. This one really bounced. Surprised Gary Kirsten. And what a good catch from Andy Whittle. Big tall man, and he went a long way and got his fingers underneath it. And Kirsten departs a very, very tough ball first up. Bounced chest high from Neil Johnson. So South Africa lose their first wicket. None for one. New batsman is Mark Boucher. Johnson bowling to Boucher. That's one of Boucher's strengths. That's why he's been promoted, because anything off line or length, he can crack it. All sorts of trouble. Gibbs is the man run out, there was hesitation, and what a way to lose your second wicket, your second opening back gone, and only in the seventh over, and 24 for two. Very good pressure from Zimbabwe here, the old adage never run in a misfield, look how quickly he recovers, the ball doesn't go far enough away, there's an awful mix up, and well done by Andy Flower as well, had to take a high delivery there. The throw wasn't all that good. He was on his knees and not balanced quite high. But Flower took it well. And South Africa lose their second wicket. 24 for two. New batsman Jacques Callis. It's a good shot. He thinks it's through and then it's not. And then he decides to run. Herschel Gibbs didn't know what to do. Streak. He's bowling to Mark Boucher. Not out, no ball. Well, Zimbabwe, they're going through the agonies and the ecstasies here. Grant Flower was the man who picked up what he thought was a catch. Umpire Shepherd had spotted this foot transgression from Streak. I don't think the result would have been any different had it not been a no ball. Mark Boucher not getting over the top of that. Grant Flower's taking a very good catch. He realized straight away he heard the call. Streak to Boucher. Oh, must be out. Did not get up as much as he thought. The ball the right length to pull. Didn't get up and gone. Boucher LBW and now game on. 25 for three in the eighth. Just a little bit unlucky here, uh, Mark Boucher. That skidded on and didn't bounce. The pull shot hasn't been very productive today. Nobody's played it with confidence. And he got caught right in the middle here. He thought it was going to get up, try to get down again to it. And in the end, got caught right in front of his stumps. 25 for three. Heat streak strikes. Mark Boucher departs for eight. 25 for three now. New batsman, Daryl Cullinan. South Africa absolutely reeling here. They've got plenty of batting. It is a long batting lineup. But this is a very, very disappointing start for South Africa. Neil Johnson to Jacques Callis. Oh, he thinks he's gone. Venkat puts the finger up. Callis plays a careless shot. And South Africa are in tatters. It's 25 for four. The big man Callis has gone. It's not been a very happy game for him. And yes. this is Johnson striking. Catch taken by Andy Flower. And they are celebrating. Zimbabwe on top.
Callis gone for naught. Caught flower. Paul Johnson, 25 for four. The South African captain, Hansi Cronier, has to play one of the major innings of his life now to rescue South Africa from here. 25 for four. We're only in the ninth over. And suddenly that Zimbabwe total of 233 for six. Looks pretty big. Johnson to Cronier. And it would have down second slips throat. Had it been there, it's four runs. Cronier's off the mark, first ball. Dal Cullinan could launch his Cricket World Cup with the beginnings here that's needed. 49 against Sri Lanka, 36 not out, 35 not out. Beautiful looking shot. It's gone through the inner ring. It might not go all the way. It's gathering pace though, and the longer won't catch it. Cullinan off the mark. Neil Johnson to Hansi Cronier. He's bowled him. Captain's gone. Johnson is having a field day. This is a calamity for South Africa. Half the side is down. And back in the dressing room, Johnson's got three of them. Yes, but this is Neil Johnson's day. He scored a brilliant 76. He's picked up the first couple of wickets, and here he gets Hansi Cronier with an absolute beauty of a Yorker. And a delight there on the face of Neil Johnson. And he has got reason to be delighted. Hansi Cronier gone for four. It's 34 for five, and we're in the 11th over. Chonty Rhodes, 39 not out against India. 17 against Sri Lanka, 18 against England. Did a bat against Kenya. That's beautifully punched away by Jonty Rhodes. It's going up the hill and it'll make it. Jonty Rhodes collects a four with a handsome looking stroke. trapped him. Georgie Rhodes can walk for that. Heath Streak takes his second wicket. And South African batsmen have no answers. Is the bubble bursting for Hansi Cronier's men? The Zimbabweans celebrate. Yes, there's, there's no doubt about this one, Hans. We've got Georgie Rhodes on the back foot here. The ball keeping low. We always felt that later on in the game it would keep low and he's Trap Plum in front and umpire Shepherd really having no hesitation in giving him out there and South Africa are at, at 40 for six in real problems. Sean Pollock coming in in a major crisis. Pollock, Pollock whips him off his toes for a lovely four. Now that'll do Sean Pollock's confidence. Power of good. Lance Klusner next in. Is he calm? Full toss, driven by Pollock. That was a gift. Neil Johnson won't be happy with that. Adam Huckle to Daryl Cullinan, his first ball in the tournament, and it's been dispatched for four. Cullinan, a classy shot. No longer to Pollock. Terrific shot. That's as good as we've seen in this South African innings. Terrific shot. Dropped short and at Whittle's pace, really on this pitch, which is a slow one, and it's inviting it. Huckle to Pollock. Taking a chance, playing the sweep shot to the leg spinner. But Pollock collects two runs. And the 100 comes up for South Africa. That seemed a long, long way ago when it was 40 for six. Oh. That's clubbed away by Sean Pollock. And it's going to beat Neil Johnson, who is just about on square. Whittle. And he, yeah. He's gone. 
Darrell Cullinan down the pitch and Andy Whittle strikes for Zimbabwe South Africa seven down now Darrell Cullinan goes chance for Lance Klusner coming in at nine for South Africa gone for it and got it just a matter of time before Lance Klusner wound up it's 50 Sean Pollock I can't say he's led a recovery yet he's played 78 balls and he's hit four fours but without him South Africa would be uh, long gone 85 required from 53 balls. It's approaching 10 and over. And it's the off spin of Andy Whittle with this field spread fairly wide. Down goes Pollock. Pollock is out. Henry Alonga takes the catch at long off. Andy Whittle takes his second wicket. And surely that's it for South Africa. Fifty-two from eighty-one balls. Gone to Andy Whittle. One hundred and forty-nine for eight. Steve Alworthy must be wondering how on earth he's going to get these runs, or certainly help Lance Klusner to get them. Streak to Alworthy. That's gone as well. That's a magnificent catch. Andy Whittle just doesn't take wickets, he catches them as well. And Elworthy perishes. Nine down now, and it's Zimbabwe's game for the taking. Whittle to Klusner. That's in the slot for him. That's four. Just two fours, no sixes yet. Whittle to Klusner. That one might be. That is huge. So the end of the 44th over, 166 for nine. Yes, well, if anybody can get 12 and over, it's this man. Tremendous power. Klusner. 37 has come off 50. Guy Whittle to bowl to him from the river end. Smash. Four. Scoop to Klusner. Big hit. And that six takes Lance Klusner to 50. Longer to Donald. Caught him. Brilliant catch yet again. End of the game. Alonga takes the wicket. Donald out. Klusner left undefeated on 52. Zimbabwe win by 48 runs. Historic victory. The first time in eight tries that they've beaten South Africa in a one-day game. Well, 25 for 4, 34 for 5, 40 for 6, from that kind of start, there didn't appear to be too much of a way back. But when Pollock and Klusner were together, there was a real possibility of Zimbabwe's ambitions being blighted, but they came through in the end by 48 runs, as you can see. And Johnson and Streak did the, did the damage early on, six wickets between them. And together with his 76 runs earlier on, Johnson was not surprisingly named as man of the match. And you might like to know, looking at that, that South Africa were 8 to 1 on to win this particular match. No such thing as a dead cert. Alistair, congratulations. The first time Zimbabwe have beaten South Africa. How does it feel? No, it feels great. You know, everyone had written us off uh, before this game. You know, we were on the plane home and 
you know, we just had a team chat and we said we've got nothing to lose. Just, just go out there and uh, win or lose, we're going to enjoy this game. And, and that's what we did. And, uh, you know, we got all three departments relatively right today, which was uh, really good to see. Would you like to comment on the man of the match, his performance, Neil Johnson? Yeah, I mean, he was uh, hyped up for this game, obviously. Uh, you know, he played a long time for Natal and couldn't get into the South African side. So <laughs> he was really hyped up to show that he could play and uh, batted really well today and then came in and got knocked the stuffing out of their batting. So uh, great performance by him. Now, in simple terms, this is what the events of today means. And don't be deceived by that table as it stands. If England are beaten tomorrow, they are out of the World Cup. Victory, a tie, or rain all day, and they'll join Zimbabwe and South Africa in the Super Six. But the crucial column is the one on the right. Zimbabwe's run rate ensures that they are through already, and India's is so much better than England's that if they win tomorrow, England will slip to fourth and consequently be out. But the other crucial factor is that another four and a half overs have to be bowled for there to be... A Take it or make it. Make it where? <laughs>